Today is Monday, December 4th, 2023. My name is Christina Wolfenbarger. I'm the historian at the Pigeon Forge Public Library. And today I'm talking with lifelong Pigeon Forge resident, Steve Myers. So uh, let's just uh, start at the beginning. So um, where, where and when were you born? I was born at Yarbury Hospital in Sevierville. Yarbury, yep. I gotcha. And so you were not born at home. A lot of people no. were born at home, but you were born down there. Mm -hmm. And what yes. is your, who's your dad? What's your dad's name? Grady T. Myers. Grady T. Myers. And where was he born? Do you know? Oh, gosh. He grew up over in what they call Starkey Town. Okay. That's over off of Mill Creek. Okay. Milk, M-I-L-L Creek? No, Mill. Oh, okay. 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 But he was probably born at home because, you know, he was born 1919. So. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your mother, who was your mom? My mother was Grace Ombi. Ombi, okay, okay. And she was born in Gatlinburg. Oh, okay, so she's a, a Gatlinburg. She was Ombi. born on John's Branch. Oh, yeah. The Pass Carter Town Church. Yep. And then grandparents on either side? My grandparents were Mel and Roxy Myers. Mm -hmm. And my... Other grandparents were John and Rosa Ombi. Rosa? Yes. R O S A? Mm -hmm. All right. I think it really was Rosanna, but I think they called her. I called it. I never knew her, so I, you know, I didn't know. Mm hmm. Okay. And then how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have two brothers and one sister. Okay. And what are. Charlotte is my sister. She is the oldest. Okay. And I have an older brother that died when he was just real young like two years old oh, gosh. and uh, his name he was Grady Myers Jr. We called him Ronald but his name that's he was Grady Myers Jr. Okay. And my other brother is Johnny Michael Myers. Okay. And then where do you come in that lineup? I'm the last one. You're the baby. Yeah. <laughs> and so where do you remember the bulk of your childhood? Did you where what house did you live in? Where were y'all located? I've lived over on Middle Creek now veterans, but I've lived always. I've lived on the lower Middle Creek all my life. Yeah, yeah. I live in a little rock house right up from Dollywood. Oh, gotcha. Okay, so then there's a barn over there. There's Is that a barn, your barn? Over, It's got my dad's name on it. Grady Myers. Grady Myers. Yep. So that's still your land right in there. Y'all yes. still have part of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And uh, so you got all these boys. Did y'all have to share bedrooms? How was it? Was it tight in there? <laughs> well, when I was little. My sister got married when I was five years old, because mm -hmm. she was older, and I had to sleep in the same bedroom with her. It means, you know, she was an adult, and I was a little kid, and when she got married, I got a bedroom. <gasps> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so that's how that was, but see, like, we're just Bigger three Bigger boys of were jealous of that, I bet. Well, no, the other brother, see, my other brother was gone. He was already passed away. Yeah. I okay. never, I never knew him. Okay. Okay. Wow. He passed away before my dad went into the World War II. Yeah. Wow. So your dad was in the military? He was in World, World War, II. War II in Germany. Okay. So what did you, so was there a big enough age gap that you guys didn't play together or did you play no, together? No, not really because it was like 14 between my sister and I and then it was seven between me and my brother. So you were almost kind of an only child. Yeah. I mean, he was out gone when I was growing up. Yeah. So what kind of stuff did you play with? Do you remember when you were little? I uh, just everything. We'd go outside and play. Roger Whaley is was one of my best friends. I mean Roger would do a lot of stuff. We just get outside and play like most kids. And this is Roger that works for the city now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we play ball and stuff together over at school and play ball in the yard and with people we'd get out and, you know, find people to play ball with. But we just did stuff like that. Go up in the woods and play, build forts, things like that. And uh, what did you guys go for doctor to, uh, or checkups or when you were sick? Did you go down to Sevierville to a doctor? Did you have somebody that came to the house? We, uh, I went to Benson in Gatlinburg. Uh, I never went to the doctor much because I never was real sick until I started having a lot of sore throats and I had to take my tonsils out. But oh, I went yeah. to Benson in Gatlinburg and then that's when they sent me to St. Mary's. Okay. But I was like a sophomore in high school then, so. Oh, wow. But it, uh, I never really went a lot. I mean, you didn't. That's the only doctor we had after I got a grown son was Dr. St. John over Pigeon Forge. Okay. Do you remember where his office was? 
Yes, sir. Right before I showed you where Warden Bills is. Yeah. You go around that little road, mm -hmm. and that's down there for these some condos built there. Before you get to them, there was a doctor's office there. Oh, okay. And then we had some, there were some doctors in Sevierville, but like I said, I never was sick, so we just I never did go. And I'm, and back then, people just. You didn't go for checkups. You just kind of dealt with it at home if you guys yeah, were My mother had a lot of old remedies yeah. that, that yeah. you know. Do you remember any of them? Nah, she just did like that rock candy stuff, you know, like if you had a sore throat and things like that, try to make your own cough it's syrup. too bad but, it didn't fix your tonsils, you know. Oh, yeah, well, that's just part of it. <laughs> that is part of it. <laughs> and so what did you and Roger want to be when you grew up? Do you remember? We had no idea. <laughs> Yeah. So did y'all have any neighbors near you? Any oh, yeah. Kids? I had a lot of the Henry's kids okay. and everything lived up from us. And uh, the Stotts, oh, they okay. lived up from me. Mm -hmm. Terry that works for the city, he's younger than me, but they, they his family lived up the road from me. And uh, that's about it. I mean, you had just certain families there because the Stotts had a lot of property there. Because Miss Hood, was her mother was a Stott. Okay. And uh, so they owned all that land up through there. And... So that was pretty much it. I, you know, as far as kids go. So now, if your land was literally right there on veterans, what was veterans when you go? Was that just a field for y'all? Well, where that was it the, cropland where or the, where the Diane's resale is? Okay. We had a field there before we filled that in with dirt, and it we we had some horses in there, and we'd get in there and play in that field and stuff too. But. Uh, we had property on up on Forge Hideaway. My dad bought property up in there. He had some stuff up there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did y'all spend the night at each other's houses right through Not there? Not much. I wasn't yeah. too much on spending the night with anybody. Yeah. Pretty much just want to yeah, stay home. Yeah, I was pretty much stay home. <laughs> Where'd y'all like to go when you were little? Family most of the time. Mm -hmm. We Now, we went to Cherokee a lot. And we'd ride okay. over there, you know, because I had anyone go We'd always go across the mountain, and they had those roadside stops where you people would had picnic tables and stuff. There wasn't many restaurants, so you had to just take your food, and you'd stop there and eat. Ah, uh, was there stuff to buy there, like souvenirs and stuff? No, this was, was it... just this was just picnic tables. Oh, just picnic they tables. They called them like a roadside stop, wow. and uh, we go over in Cherokee and for a little bit, but. The, most of the time, we spent most of our time over in Little Cove. We went to church at Little Cove Baptist Church. Okay. And uh, my dad's uncle, Bruce Myers, we uh, we went over to his house all the time. They'd just gather up over there and meet, and they'd eat and everything, and kids would get out and play in the yard and everything like that. Okay. But, you know, and then once in a while we'd go to, they'd go to, like we went on one trip to Florida, just you know, oh, okay. Just That's what I was going to ask you. Did you guys go on vacations or anything? We go some. Yeah. We went camping a lot. Oh yeah. Did you go camp to the national up, park? Or? Yeah, we went up where the chimneys picnic area used to be a chimneys campground. Okay. We used to camp up there oh, a lot when I was a kid. Wow. But it's just, I mean, you know, you just back then you just had to try to find anything you could do. I mean, it wasn't, wasn't a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yep. And so then where did you guys go to school? I went to Pigeon Forge Elementary. Okay. And then I went to Sevier County High School. In Sevier County, okay. All right. And so um, who was your favorite teacher? Miss Hood. Miss Hood. Miss Reba Hood. Her maiden name was Cawhorn? Cawhorn. Cawhorn. Okay. I've been saying that wrong. Cawhorn. Hood. Okay. And then, so was she also a neighbor, you said? She was my next door neighbor. Next door neighbor. And what was your relationship like with her? She's just like a second mother. Oh, yeah? I went everywhere with them. I mean, I even went to Catherine's piano lessons with them. When oh, she wow. would go to Irish Newman and Sevierville and take piano lessons, I'd ride down there with them. And I so mean, then Catherine was their daughter? Yeah. Me okay. and Catherine were like brother and sister. She oh. was a little bit older than me, but we are we had we rode ponies together and everything. We both had ponies, so. So she was kind of like your little playmate. Yeah, well, she's you know she was one of them. You know, I had more, you know, like Roger and all the rest of them. But yeah, we were pretty close growing up. Yep. And um, so, what grades did she teach? Do you remember? First grade. She was first grade. So you had her in first grade also. Mm, okay. Yes. Okay. I think she taught earlier in her career. She might have taught some high school, but I think, but most of the years were first grade. 
everybody in Fish and Forks had her in the first grade. And so when most. you, yeah, so she taught for what, like 30 years or something? Oh, no, she went in, I think, 52 years. Oh, my gosh, 52 so years. She that had, is they amazing. Had a, they, her and her daughter had a private school that they uh, they run for a few years after Reber retired from public school. Really? And, Do you uh, remember what it was called? Montgomery Christian School. I'd like to look into that a little bit. Montgomery Christian School. They did the Becca program. So. And where was that? It's right up behind her house, where her house was on Middle Creek. Yeah. It's still there. It's, just a, it's an overnight rental now. Really? The building? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's right below my house. That is really cool. Um, so did you like going to school? For the most part. <laughs> I like most kids like recess better. Right, right. What did you guys do at recess? Play marbles, baseball, anything yeah. good. I mean, that's, you know, kids didn't have any phones or anything. You had to do something. So when it was pretty, you play a lot of marbles and uh, ball. Yeah. So you've brought us some pictures today. Here's one of the now, those baseball guys, team. They're older than me, yes. Those, those guys are. So this is. That's all Pigeon Forge boys. All Pigeon Forge boys. I think maybe that might have been a Sevierville a long time years ago had like an all star team. Okay. And those, that was the boys on it. These two are brothers, John Dale and Donnie Trotter. Now, that's the, is that the coach? Is that Robert Pickle? I get, yes, it is. Okay, because he had a gas station and he, yes. didn't he have a supermarket. Yes, and... he had that up where I guess Howard Reagan's got now. I think that's Robert Pickles. It was Robert Pickles' building. Yeah. That's cool. It looks like the Rotary Club actually was their sponsor of the uniforms there. That's Tony Watts' father-in-law. Tony Watts? Yeah, Tony, the commissioner that's married to Marty. Oh, okay. Now they've got that's different... probably the best athlete that's probably been in Sevier County, Ronnie Joe Whaley. He Would played he everything. He could play. He, got a, he even got a, he got a contract with the Washington Redskins. Really? To play football, yeah. So did he go to college? Yeah, he went to UT Chattanooga. That's the year that you, one year UT Chattanooga beat UT. He was on Ooh, that team. That is cool. And then of course, you know, Lynn Maples, he's, mm -hmm. and Bill Barnes. Bill Barnes was my Pony League coach in baseball. Nice, that's, that's Cindy's a dad. That's the, down the courthouse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And you've got some other school pictures here. Let's see. I don't know. I can just give you the picture. I don't okay. know that much about them. Let's know. see. This was 1958 and 59. Yes. That's Miss Large's class, fifth grade. And then you've got some team stuff here, too. This is the girls, East Tennessee champions. And uh, what, is it? what year is it? This is 59 and 60, okay. East Tennessee champion with uh, Mr. Marshall was coach. And then you said the boys and were the same that, year? There's the boys. They were both champions that year. Oh, wow. In the same year, 59 and 60. And then you've got some more school pictures That's, here. Uh, Miss Davenport. This is 58, 59. Miss Davenport. I've heard of her several times with other, other folks. And this is just another. This is a year after that championship team. That's the girls. Girls basketball? Yes. There's that one. And that one's got yeah. the names with them. And that's the boys. I'm assuming it's the same year. Uh-huh. Let's see if it's one with something. Uh, no, this goes with, that goes with that girls basketball thing. I believe one of them. Okay. But this is another, this is a his sixth grade class, I guess. That's Mr. Marshall. Oh, so is he, he, uh, he taught and he was principal yes. and he was coach? Yes. We've he heard was. stories about him having to take people to uh, games in the back of his truck. And oh, yeah. <laughs> he was dedicated. He, he was there until I was in the fifth grade. Really? And I was like a first grader. We got in some trouble. And he had what they call a little candy room there in the middle of the school there like you could buy candy and stuff <laughs> he had a church pew there a small church pew <laughs> some of us boys got in trouble and he made us kneel down like we were praying for punishment <laughs> <We had stopped laughs> <there. laughs> instead of spanking us that's what he did 
Oh, that's oh. pretty. Funny. So we're looking at the boys' basketball, and we're thinking this is probably about be the next year after. I probably think. sixty, maybe. So when did you start school, though? Probably right about 60, that time. Yeah, about 69. I mean, 59 or 60. I can't remember. I don't know. I, I, I went into high school in 68, but that was probably the year 67, 68. When you so then in. when were you, what year were you born? I was born in 53. In 53. Okay. So <clears throat> you would have gone into, there was no kindergarten, right? No. So you just went. I went into first grade. Into first grade. And how old were you? Five. Five. I turned uh, six in October. Okay. Okay. So you got October of 53 is when you were born. Yes. Okay, gotcha. Okay. October 21st. And did you, so you said on recess, you guys like to play marbles and baseball when the weather was good. Football. Whatever. Football. What'd you do when it rained or snowed? Oh, gosh, it's been so I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> we probably went to the gym. Just did stuff in there. Yeah. Did y'all have any, uh, plays or events or spelling bees or yeah they well no not really i mean you had to it, it just normal classroom stuff i mean we didn't have any anything like that that i can remember now the pigeon forge school you mm -hmm. went to was located where where the city hall is now where the city hall is that they're getting ready to remodel mm -hmm. all yeah. that old bill up there that's the old school okay that wasn't far from fort ware no did y'all ever see the elephants escape? No, I was I, when I was in school. One year, I I don't remember what year it was, but there was a baboon escape from the zoo. <laughs> that had to be and so they, weird. They had a lot. We couldn't go outside, yeah. so they caught it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, how odd. You know, it's that's crazy. But I remember them talking about the elephants crossing the river, but I I never did get to see it. I was oh, too wow. young. Wow. Do you remember any of the books that you read when you were little? Or did you like to read, or were you more of an outside guy? I was more of an outside. I yeah. Don't... Yeah. So you said you guys did go to church. Your family yes. did go to church here. And you went to Little, little Cove? Little Cove Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. And that's located where? And go across Pine Mountain, you go into Little Cove. Okay, so kind of Wears Valley-ish, back of Wears Valley? You take a left before you start go across going into Wears Valley. Okay, and how did you all actually get there? We we come we went right by the city of Pine Mountain Road. We okay. went across Pine Mountain, and and uh, then when you cross over Pine Mountain, you got down and you take a right down at the bottom of that hill, and then you go on about I don't know three or four miles, and you go into Little Cove. Yeah. Or you could go to Wires Valley the other way. Is it I mean, still there? Is the church still there? Oh yeah, the church is there. I've got a lot of family buried in the cemetery. Really? Yes, a lot of Myers are. Matter of fact, uh, James Napoleon is the first uh, person to be buried in that cemetery. Really? Yes. And he was what, like a he was two my, greats? Oh uh, yeah, back? he'd be yeah. Gosh, he's way back. Or more? Yeah. <laughs> On oh, I guess that's your dad's side. Yes. And you remember uh, any things that uh, you had there? Any baptizings? Any homecomings oh, yeah. I, or I got, decoration days? I was baptized as you go up on the spur where Caney is I we cut up to Caney on the right the first road out Pigeon Forge mm -hmm. we were back we was parked there was a little place in there you could pull off and we parked there and went across and I was baptized in the river there ooh that was chilly in 1966 wow wow was it deep enough? oh yeah oh okay I mean they there was a hole there you know where they they do that sign gotcha so as you uh, went from elementary school, you went to high school at Sevier County, you yes. said? Now, did you say you had one year at the old building? Yes. And then that burned, correct? Well, it didn't then, burn or, then, it, but it, they just built a new high school. Okay. And they moved us up to the new high school. Gotcha. So you did have one year at the old high school. Yes. And um, so when you finally started dating and stuff, who? what did y'all do on dates? You go into Sevierville and well, do stuff. Well, if you had any you money, <laughs> you, you would go get something to eat. Johnson's Drive In, and we just circle and drive to Gatlinburg and cruise, and that's about it. Where was Johnson's Drive In? It is where, right across from the 
the old uh, Walmart there. Where you know where the the AT and T phone place was there. Yeah, yeah. It was back up. I guess it's where that uh, Chinese food place is. Okay. That was John. That's where Johnson's Driving was, and they had the Dairy Queen and the Tasty Freeze were down below mm. them. But I didn't do. I was kind of young for some of them. But I, I, I was at at uh, Johnson's Drive-In a lot. Hmm. Now it wasn't a drive-in movie. It was just drive-in no, restaurant. They call it drive-in because you drive, you drive in. in and it's like Sonic. You go in and you just ordered and and ate up. They had a little bit of a lot. I mean, a, a dining room in there you could go in and eat. But most all the kids ate outside. Yeah. In the cars. And then, so when did you meet your wife? When she was, uh, I guess, a junior in high school. Okay. And so, how old were you? I was a senior. Okay, so you're one year older. Yes. Okay, but y'all went to school together. Yes. Did you go through grade oh, we, school we, together? No, either? she was. She went to Sevierville. Oh, okay. Okay, but you went to high school together. Yes. That's where you met. Yes. In high school. And how long did y'all date before you got married? Well, probably. Uh, Probably at least three years or so. Oh, wow. Okay. So she went to business college in Knoxville, and then we got married after that. Did you go to college, or did you go no, to work? Or I should you... have, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, hindsight's twenty twenty. Yeah. Where? What did you do after high school? Did well, you go I to work? I built houses with my dad, and then, and then I worked for my father-in-law's son, and then I finished up, spent 32 years with T-Dot. Oh, wow. Okay. I was a bridge inspector. Well, now tell us what your wife's name is. Barbara. Mm-hmm. And what's her maiden name? Stott. So then, were those Stotts, was she a Stott that was your neighbor? No. Okay. Different they, they, They She grew up down Chapman Highway where he cut out the Watts School. Oh, gotcha. Okay. So the Stott family had a couple of places here in town. Were they related, though? Yes, but they, well, see, they, there were a lot of brothers and sisters in that, like, see, uh, Kim Huffaker's grandmother, Ruby, was a sister to Miss Hood's mother. Okay. They were all Stotts. Okay. And Terry Stotts' grandfather was a brother to them. Okay. So it's just, you know, they, but they, there's kind of a big like family. Everybody, you know, like the women married and they moved out and, you know, they, mm-hmm. that's just the way it was. Okay. And um, so do you remember when you proposed? Oh gosh, no! I don't. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> so, what year did y'all get married? Uh, nineteen seventy-three. And what month? October the twelfth. And where did you get married? The chapel at Dollywood. The chapel at Dollywood. The Robert F. Thomas Chapel in Dollywood. Yes. And who married you? Robert F. Thomas. Wow, that is pretty great. He made us come about three Sundays. We didn't make us, but we had to go about three Sundays to his service before he'd marry us. Yeah. So where did she go to church? Did She, she go went to, to Pleasant Hill Methodist. Okay. Okay. How did y'all decide to get married there? Well, her dad was a, like assistant manager, and he built the church. And they just, it was just a good place, and they thought it'd be a good idea, so that's what they wanted to do. Now, Dollywood was not Dollywood then. No, it was Gold Rush Junction. It was Gold Rush Junction. And you have brought this absolutely amazing, I've never even seen this, Gold Rush Junction. It's like a little, it's a newsletter about the park, basically. Yes, it's about the, I guess, more or less the upcoming one in Pigeon Forge. Yeah. Gold Rush Phoenix, and this is dated October of 1973. So you can see, so then if you were the first wedding you said this is the year that the chapel was actually dedicated i'm assuming that's it i know but you know it could have been built and then a year or two and then they they oh and then and then you guys got married but here's a little sketch of the the church here and they're talking about they're talking about the chapel over Mm -hmm. there and here is art modell who the um he was the owner of the cleveland browns yes that purchased it was Rebel Railroad before that, mm-hmm. I think, wasn't it? And yes. then he turned it into Gold Rush Junction. So um, the country was also getting ready for the Bicentennial from 1976. So there's a lot of that couple years leading up to it. 
and then okay. you can see inside. That's the builder of the church. And his name George Hedrick. George Hedrick. And who is he to you? He was my wife's dad. That was your wife's dad. Okay. Her dad passed away when they were all little. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then um, there's just all kinds of neat stuff in here. And then there is, let's see, where's the picture with the horse that you guys? That's in that other thing, isn't it? Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah. This guy here, I went to school with his son. He was the engineer on the train. Ah. Yeah, Norman Manus. I mean, here's some of the little uh, Top of the Hill gang. Yes. And did you know some of them? Gail Householder's only one I recognize there. That was James How and Julia Householder's daughter. Gotcha. So it's just, this paper is just really amazing and all the stuff that's in here. And there's talking, there's Temple's Milling, Sue's Fashion, Pigeon Forge Pottery. So a lot of local businesses uh, advertised in here. And you knew this girl, Debbie Lewis. That's Eunice Elledge's daughter. That worked for Dollywood for years in my office. Oh, wow. No, maybe she worked for all of them Go Rush and all. Really, really neat. And then here, you said some of these folks went off into, mm. went to Nashville? The two of them, Russ and Becky Jeffers, and uh, Osiombi and Jim Ball were local people that were offered. They, they tried to get them to go to Nashville a lot, but they didn't really want to. They wouldn't stay around here, I think. Oh, wow. But they were local musicians that made music in Gatlinburg mm -hmm. and Was everywhere. Jim, they were the ones that walked up and down the street, weren't they? Well, they had, I guess, they had, they were in Gatlinburg a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So just a really neat but it's just a, document here. You got it laminated. There's Gold Rush Junction. They mm -hmm. did that little album, Memories of mm -hmm. Gold Rush. Really, really neat. Oh, they've got a new feature that your gold rush features a new zoo. <laughs> so it's kind of was it kind of like a little petting zoo? I guess you're talking fifty years ago. This so is I, true. It's been a minute. I, been, I don't remember two weeks ago. <laughs> it has been a minute. Oh, and then man. let's see. Um, so y'all had uh, your wedding at the chapel. Yes. And um, so you just recently celebrated a big anniversary, didn't you? Yes. Was it fifty years? Fifty years. Wow. And then you had kids. Yes. How many kids did you have? Two. Two. Steven. Girls? Or no, I have boys. Steven's the oldest. Yeah. And, and then. Steven and uh, Keisha. And Keisha. Okay. Now, She's Keisha Wire now. W-E-A-R. So she mm -hmm. married our current mayor, David. David. Yes. Okay. So the Wares and the Myerses are, are now family. Mm -hmm. now, ironic. My dad and David's grandfather were really like best friends they were really Aww. good friends yeah we used to go over to frank's house a lot when i was a little boy yeah so did stephen get married yes oh and who did he marry trish helton off of walden's creek and so are you a grandfather yes how many grandkids you got three three who's got what keisha's got two she's got Graydon. okay and Addie. And Addie. A D D I E. Yes. Is it short for Adeline? Addison. Addison. Okay. Okay. And then how many does Stephen Trish have? They got one. Creed. Okay. Little boy. Yes. Aww. Him and Addie are the same age. Yeah. So when you all first got married, did you live with one of your parents? Did you build a house, buy a house, rent a house, or apartment? No, or we. Uh, do? We first got married. We. I, we bought a little small house trailer and put it on a lot next to Miss Hood. Oh, okay. And and we lived in it three or four years, and then we built our house up behind her up on the hill, up on top up there mm -hmm. in 78. And, so and that's we, the one we you're still in, in? We lived in that. We've lived in that house ever since 1978. Oh, wow. Did y'all go on a honeymoon? No, not then. We couldn't afford to. Yeah. We just kind of went off for, you know, this little overnight deal, and then but then the next year, we started going on vacation. We go all the time now. Sometimes Where'd you start going? Well, the first time we went, I'd never been to the beach. We went to, I'd never been to Myrtle Beach. We went to Myrtle Beach with her family and some of them. Where'd you go on your overnight honeymoon? Oh, we just went over the mountains. Did you go to Cherokee? 
No, we we're over in Townsend. Oh, gotcha. Okay, okay. All right. So, um, you had the farm with your family there on. Yes, yeah, it's a small farm. Maybe. Would y'all? Did you have livestock or? We had cattle. Mm -hmm. We had pigs. We have a big, long chicken house. We get five thousand chickens in at a time. Wow. And uh, we had horses, yeah. and. When I was a little boy, we had two mules, and uh, <laughs> and then we just anything that my dad, is like I said, he come out of the depression and all that stuff. Any way that he could find to make money, he would do he something. Would do it. But he loved farming. Yeah. He was a stonemason. Really? Trade. Yeah. He learned to, he he was in the CCCs, and that's where he oh, picked wow. up his trade of that. And. Uh, so we, you know, we we did that, but we did a lot of farming. Yeah. I so do you also have crops too besides the livestock? We, we did we did molasses. We had cane. We had tobacco. He had about three gardens every year. Yeah. My mother can and put stuff up all summer long. Did you have to help him? Oh yeah, you didn't say the house. Then. <laughs> that just there was said, no well, sitting around, said, was said, there? Let's go. Yeah. And you go. You go. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. So, did you know your grandparents? Yes. I mean, I, I went around them some, but we, it's not like I am about my grandma. I mean, I, I run my kids all, grandkids all the time, but yeah, people back then, it was just different. You just, you know, like when I was playing ball and stuff, my mother, my mother didn't drive and my dad worked all the time. Yeah. So, I, I just had to walk back and forth. Yeah. I mean, like me and Roger would walk home every day. We'd have baseball or basketball or something. So then you walked from where the city hall is. Over on Middle Creek. Over to Middle Creek. Yes. Both ways. Yes. In the rain uphill with a bear chasing you. Yes. No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so what was your favorite thing coming out of the garden? Everything. Everything? Oh, you no, just I mean, ate it all? My mother was a great cook. I oh, mean, you yeah. just, I don't know, remember. Probably, yeah, I mean, I liked it about everything. Yeah. So did y'all take your lunch to school or? I did some because I didn't really like the food in the cafeteria. Oh, so I guess that's just a tradition, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> cafeteria <I> just, food. <laughs> but, I mean, it got better, though, year, year down the road. But when I was a kid, it was, yeah, man, it, was all, it wasn't real good. <laughs> and uh, did you have, were any of the farm animals your pets or did you have dogs, cats? I had pun well, I had some dogs, but I had uh, I had my pony when I was growing up. Yeah. I rode it a lot. I'd ride it over in Pigeon Forge. Wow. So what was yeah. the parkway like then? Was it just farmland mostly? Uh, no, it, we had the four lane, but it was just, it It wasn't nothing like it is now. I mean, yeah. it's just a few cars, you know. Yeah. Most people were going on their way to the mountains or Gatlinburg. You just kind of drove through Pigeon Forge yeah. to get to Gatlinburg. You had a few motel you had about two or three motels and two or three restaurants you didn't have even no mcdonald's or anything like mm -hmm. that you had a supermarket newman's supermarket was mm -hmm. the first one and you had pickles but pickles too, right? yes it was but i mean i call it more like a store it butler store gotcha. that to me were more like a little store but the force the supermarket was newman's and that went in where the old food city is right where that yes. food city express is now yes that's okay. where newman's supermarket was okay and then you brought us this picture also. This was one of the gas stations in town. The Ward Bell? Warden Bill. Warden Bill. Gotcha. And you don't have to do those. I'm just, I just brought yeah. the picture of that just to see. And so there was a, there was a little gang that kind of hung I was, out That was there. some of the crew that was at Warden Bill almost every day. Yeah. Oh, that's neat. And that right. was located kind of That's, down past the old mill yes going north just a little bit just past where you turned to go to the old mill there was a go-kart track there right that yeah. they just torn down and so it was right in that area where they where they tore the, the go-kart track down that's where warden bill's garage was at gotcha gotcha so there wasn't a whole lot going on in pigeon forge then no but i mean you still i mean we had some good times oh sure we had we really had good times growing up. You couldn't ask for better times because, I mean, you you, you did things and you didn't, you know, you'd go swimming in the river and stuff like that. You just, yeah. you made your fun. 
Well, now, did your dad, you said he would do just about anything to try to make some money. So, would he sell his um, garden stuff and the tobacco? Not that he said we did the tobacco. Uh, because did you say you made molasses also? Mm, we sold it. Okay. Okay. And the tobacco. Yes. And then you're mostly, then you canned for yourself. Yes. Okay. Okay. So, I know a lot of people uh, would bring stuff to the canning factory, but I think right. that was probably before your... Well, we didn't do that. I know I asked before my time. We also, we'd kill two hogs every year. Oh, okay. And uh, my dad would put them up in the barn and he would feed them corn and stuff. And and then we always had a lot of pork to eat. <laughs> That's and a good chickens. Way to... We had a lot of chickens to eat, too. <laughs> uh, so then do you remember, uh, so after you and your wife got married, did you still help with the farm? Because you weren't very far oh, away. Yeah, I go by and help day. Yeah, yeah. So you were the last one out of the house. No, I would, but I would stop and check on them. I mean, I, I stopped every day and checked on them. Do you and your wife have a garden? We did at the beginning, but she wasn't that much of the outside. <laughs> <laughs> She'd help a little bit, but I, when we were first married, I got her to can some green beans and stuff. But And then we always, me and Daddy and Johnny and all of us, we, we always had a lot of potatoes to dig. We'd, dig, oh. we'd have a big, we'd dig those, and we'd have potatoes all winter, you know, so. Yeah. So what did you do for work then? And did you and did Barbara work too? Yeah, she's always been she's a paralegal now. Okay. But when she got out of school she went to work at Wagner's in in Severable for about six months. And then Johnny Waters, out of Severable the lawyer out of Severable mm-hmm. needed a secretary and Bobby went to work for him and and worked for him for quite a few years. Yeah. And then she went into the uh, paralegal stuff. So after that, after he he went to TVA, oh, okay. and she didn't want to drive to Knoxville because of her kids. Gotcha. So she gotcha. she moved into that. Gotcha. And what was Wagner's? It was like an, a, a factory, like an electric. She worked in the office. Oh, okay. Okay. What kind of factory was it? Do you remember? They did like electrical stuff. You know, oh, okay. I, can't, I mean, it was like I can't remember where it's lights or something they made, but I never was in then there, so I don't know. And okay. she wasn't there very long, so then. Yep. So, did y'all bring any traditions from your two families when you started having kids? Any well, Christmas traditions? Any. Well, we always. Favorite just, foods? Uh, my mother always cooked a big meal and we'd always gather up, you know. At my, we'd go to my mother and dad's at, on Christmas Eve and then we'd leave there and we'd go down to my wife's grandparents on Chapman Highway. And we'd be down there till midnight, everybody in there. Old. So we, we, and then we went to her other grandmother. Well, when she was living on Jenkins Hill in Suburban, we, mm-hmm. we went down there like on Christmas Day, son. But that's about it. Most time, most things went on Christmas Eve with us. Yeah. Yeah. And um, did you guys ever go to the fair? Oh, yes. Yeah. We went to it. When I was in school, they had what they call fire day. Mm. And you go on, it was on like on a Friday. And you'd work trying to make every dollar you could to, to go. I mean, you could take $5 or $6 to go to the fire back then. You'd have a pretty good day. Yeah. And the food down there was great. Because it's like the Methodists, they had a booth that they, they fixed food and, and JC's and all them. So it was good, good food. And you could stay all day and... And they let you out of school? They took us down on a school bus. That's oh, what wow. they called it. They called it fair day. fair day, so everybody could go. Yes. Anybody wanted to go, but you had to ride the bus down. You had to ride the bus back to school. Mm-hmm. You'd see, I mean, where the suburban middle school is in there now. Mm-hmm. When it was old high school there, that's the fire was in behind it. Okay. That's and what I was going to ask you is where was it located at that in, point? It's in behind the old high school. Okay. And that field there. And... There would be buses in there lined up where they brought the kids to the fire. So I guess all the whole county went then. Probably all, the county, all the county schools that wanted to go. Yeah. Wow. Do you remember any big events in town? Any floods? Or... Oh, yeah. When we flood, my dad and I would go down. We'd drive from Pigeon Forge and, and come in where Carl Hatcher's furniture is. You could get to there, but then you could look down in town and see what the town was flooded. Oh, down in Severable? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It used to be pretty bad down there. It flooded pretty oh, regularly. Yeah. They'd always have big sales after the 
<laughs> flood sales. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> All the gosh. two or three department stores were in there. <laughs> was it as uh, hot back then as it is now? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Steamy. I mean, I could take it better then. <laughs> I know. I understand how that is. Do you remember any uh, of the major uh, news events when you were growing up? What's your first? Oh, gosh. I don't know. That's kind of caught me off guard there. That's... You probably would, might have remembered Kennedy. Yes, I remember when when he got. I, I remember seeing that on TV. Yeah. I remember when Martin Luther got killed. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, remember landed on the moon. Yes, Neil yeah. Arm when he was Neil Armstrong was doing that. But. Uh, you know, it's just like around here, like back then. You know, it's like always the Christmas parades and things you'd have oh, in yeah. town and things like that. Did y'all have a TV? Yes. You remember when you got your TV? I don't know. I was little, but it was black and white. It was black and white. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. And um, what do you remember most about your mom? Well, she's just a, a good mother. I mean, you know, she's a good Christian woman and good cook. Yeah. <laughs> but now she would get on you if you did I mean, if you didn't what'd she get mad at you for what'd, what'd you do to get in trouble I don't know I wasn't too bad really I mean I when we go to church I'd sit most time when I was real little I'd sit with mother I didn't sit with daddy the, the women sit on one side of church the men sit on the other really yes okay because you could always tell if you had visitors the man and woman sat together and uh but that's just the way it was. My yeah. mother sat over here, and my dad sat up about three rows from the back on the other side. When I were the kids, well, I, I was uh, I was with my mother. Now, okay. Most kids sat with their parents. You oh, know, okay. And you know, you didn't make a move when <laughs> when my mother. I mean, if she did, boy, she'd pinch a hunk out of you. <laughs> <laughs> so she'd pinch you if you yeah. got in trouble. We had two old women would shout. They'd, <laughs> Golly, I get behind my mother because that's a little bitty boy. Yeah. Did you get scared? Oh, she, well, she, they'd go all over the church, shout. Wow. Were they speaking in tongues? No, they no. were just shout. Yeah. So it just, but it's just, that's just the way a little old country church were back then. I yeah. mean, that's it. Do you remember who your preacher was? Earl Campbell. Wow. You didn't miss that. You remember him? He was, yeah, he was a good man. He took us to, he was good. I mean, he, he helped kids he, if they were in need. He took us to the Smokies ballpark one time years ago when I was just little to see a baseball game. Wow. In Knoxville? Yes. Wow. He was a carpenter by trade. Mm-hmm. He didn't get a salary for his... They'd take up a love offering every now and then for him, but... So he didn't get paid anything at all? No. And was he married and had kids? Yes. Yeah. His, uh, well... I don't know where you know him or not. Jeff Campbell is one of his grandsons. Roy Vaughn Campbell was his son. And he had a daughter named Sue. And so it, he has quite a few grandkids around here. And so you said y'all went on some vacations. Where was your favorite? Probably, I guess Florida maybe. But we went, Miss Hood, my, we all went, Miss Hood went, Catherine we went up into Virginia, and Reba was a lot about history too. So we went to the, the, the old church where George Washington and them went to. Oh yeah. We went through that church and just to see the sights in there. Mm-hmm. So how was she like your second mom? Were you just over at the house all the time playing with her daughter? Well, and... she's just. I mean, she's just good to me. I mean, she's Aww. she's closer than an aunt, and I mean. Like I said, I mean, I spent the nights down there some, and she just. You're just a sec- another child to her. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I, I did everything. I mean, I'd help her. I'd mow her yard for her and stuff. And she was just like part of our family. See, she come to our family. She come to our house at Thanksgiving's and Christmas. Now, how, was her husband around? They were divorced. They divorced. Okay. So she and her daughter lived near you guys. and they so y'all lived next door. They would come over for Thanksgiving mm. and holidays and things. And uh, her mother passed away like in 65, so she didn't come around too much. And she would. And uh, so it, it was always Catherine and Reba for the years. But then after Catherine went off to school, uh, Reba kept, she would come to our house all the time. I mean, she's just like, I mean, well, she's just part of the family. Yeah. 
So when, do you remember when she passed? Well, yeah, but it's been, I don't remember exactly what year it was, but it, it was in the 2000s. Yes. Okay. Okay. And I then know. where's Catherine? Catherine passed away too. Really? Mm -hmm. okay. Get cancer. Oh gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. It wasn't long after Miss Hood died or, that Catherine passed. Wow. She has two sons. Reba has two grandsons. Okay. Well, I bet she would have liked to have known them. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, do you think you're like your parents? Are you more like your dad? More like your mom? No, I'm not as good, but they're, <laughs> they're, uh, they were good people. Yeah. And did they go to school? Well, my dad probably went through the third grade. My mother probably went through the eighth, but you got to remember back those years were mm -hmm. they were in the depression yeah. and you just you know my, my, I've got pictures of my mother when she was just a little bitty girl and her, and her sister at, at a school in Greenbrier oh, okay mm -hmm. and just you know just when you don't have when you're 11 and you don't have a mother and you just you know it's kind of rough yeah and then your other parents on the other side divorce and yeah it's kind of that was a hard time, for sure. But that's why I think they stayed together so good. I mean, they they were really cared about each other. Yeah. Well, that's great. Do you know how any of your grandparents met? Or do you know any of your history, how they came to this area, Gosh, where they no. settled from? I, I mean, I got a picture of my mother's parents. They got married like 1914. Oh, so wow. I would have no idea. How yeah. Have you ever been. done any of your ancestry stuff to see if y'all are Scottish or Irish? or? On my admirer side, it's German. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And I guess on the Ombi would probably be more Irish. I hadn't, we haven't really went back into it a whole lot. My son did a lot of that and um, like where my family come from out of Germany, it was like when they call the Black Hills or something in mm -hmm. Germany. But that, that's how I started out in Germany was yeah. that. Okay. And the thing about my dad was fought in Germany. He had no idea that he was from German descent. Really? Because nobody had, See, people he, didn't check back into that. I mean, you, you're talking about he was a woodsman and I mean a great rifleman and stuff. He went in behind enemy lines. Oh, wow. And, scouted, and this is World War II, right? Yeah, and scouted for enemy troops. Wow. I mean, it was really dangerous what he'd done. Yeah. Did he ever talk about it? Not much. He didn't. He, he'd talk a little bit. He just, he never did talk about it much. Was he drafted or did he, did he sign up? He was drafted. Okay. Because he told me, he said he could have got, he worked for a man in Gatler, and that guy told him, said, I can keep you out if you don't want to go. And my dad said, no. Uh, my, he's talking about his brother Wayne. He said Wayne's gone on. I'm gonna go to. And they both came. And back. he had a kid. I mean, he did, and had lost a kid. Oh wow! So he had a wife and a daughter here when he went to war. Yeah. Wow. Was he ever injured? Was your uncle injured? No, my dad was in the hospital when he was released mm -hmm. because it, it messed his hips up. Oh, okay. And he was in in Mississippi in the hospital. But he never could get any military pension because his army records burn up where there was a lot of army records burn up. Wow. And he never did get a dime for his disability. Where was where were they stored? I, I, I think it was so, out west, somewhere okay. out there. But And then the facility must have caught It kind of makes you think it you know, might have a little suspicious, but... Yeah, I mean, you just don't hear about that. Courthouses burn, but you yeah. don't ever think about, like, federal but, see, he level had, stuff. He had Bill Ashley and Sabrival working on it for years, but they just never, they kept saying his records were gone. Yeah. Wow. And so, do you know why your ancestors left Germany and came to America? Probably for a better life, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Do you know anything about anybody further back? Do you have any Civil War ancestors or? No, I don't know him. Okay. Probably do, but I don't know him. What was one of the biggest changes you remember coming along in your life as far as like TV, car? I mean, y'all had cars, you had all that stuff. I guess uh, probably when you get the cell phones. 
You know, oh, yeah. Kind of, I mean, it's probably, to me, the biggest thing, you know. Of course, we had, I carried a pager for years yeah. <laughs> when I was working. But yeah. other than that, I mean, you know, of course, I think the cars back when I was a teenager were better than they are now. I agree. Completely agree. So, you said you worked at TDOT. Yes. For how many years? 32. 32. And what did you do there? I was a bridge inspector. Well, I worked on survey some, but then I, uh, my last years there, I was bridge inspector. Gotcha. And y'all had pagers? And then we cell did, phones? We did then in cell phones, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember any uh, stories from your grandparents growing up? Not really. Were they hunters, fishermen? They go in the park? They kill they, bears? My no. grandfather, Myers, was just a hard worker. He was all about making a dollar. Yeah. And uh, he sold wood up at the campground in Elkmont. Oh, okay. That's another thing my dad done. We, we, they hit, then they made another side to Elkmont Campground across the river. Mm -hmm. So my dad got that side. So we would get wood and bundle up wood and sell wood to the campers and a good idea. newspapers. And like I said, we did whatever we could do to make money. And mm -hmm. in 64 and 65, that's where I was at about every night we were at Elkmont Campground. That is cool. And then, what do you hope that your children and your grandchildren are going to remember about you later on? Well, I hope they remember good things, but they, <laughs> they'll probably remember some bad, I guess. <laughs> do they come stay with you? Well, they used to, but they're older. They're teenagers now, so oh. they don't have much use for me now. Mm, yeah. You teenagers. know, when they start driving and stuff, they're, yeah. and that's just the way it is. That's I mean, the that's the is. cycle. Yeah. But they're all in church, so that's good. That is good. That is good. Where do they go to church now? They go all go down to First Baptist. In Sevierville? Yes. Yeah. And you do too? Yes. Gotcha. Yep. And any other stories you want to share about Miss Hood or about you growing up or school or anything? Or no, I just had a good I just had a good time in Pigeon Forge. I mean, they, there's no place like Pigeon Forge. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't change it for nothing. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. And like I said, my childhood, we had fun. We did, You didn't have any money, but you had a lot of fun. But you had fun. We'd pick up Coke bottles and stuff, take them over to Butler store and sell them to get some money. And, and you never felt like you were lacking in anything? No, because I never you know? was hungry. We always had plenty yeah. of food to eat. I mean, we didn't have a lot, but my dad never made sure we did have food to eat and clothes. Yeah. What kind of toys did y'all get on Christmas? Oh gosh, that's so long. I don't even remember. You could look. I remember getting a bicycle one year for oh, Christmas. Oh yeah, that was a big thing. But that well, made going to school a lot easier. Yeah, had like a BB gun and things like that. But yeah, wasn't a lot of really like little toys like they are now. I mean, we didn't get a lot of stuff like that. Yeah. and you didn't get me any presents. You probably get maybe two or three at the most. Yeah. Get a lot of underwear and socks. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Reba was, she always get me, usually get me underwear and socks. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, you know, we just, it's, it was simple times and, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of good food to eat at Christmas and Thanksgiving. At Thanksgiving, we ate supper, we ate dinner, I call it supper, because at lunchtime, we were in the barn grading off tobacco. Oh, okay. And my mother would cook all night the night before. She was up there too with us. She'd be grading it off. We had to put it in grades. Mm -hmm. And then I was on packing it on the baskets. I, people would reach it to you and use up on top and you'd just go around the circle packing it on. Wow. But I mean, we had to have, that was our cash crop in December. We, my daddy, he'd sell his tobacco most of the time. I didn't go with them all the time, but and then they'd go to Panama City you know, after that. Yeah. For a week. Where would he sell it? Newport. Really? Yes. Was there like a market it, over there? Yes, or? it was Doyle Barger had a big uh, warehouses up there. If you go, as you go down by those car lots for Stenitz is, mm -hmm. down in that, down there, before you make the curve going into the old Newport, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the uh, tobacco warehouses were. So did y'all have a truck? Or a trailer full? Yeah, we or? had a big truck. And uh, then my dad, one year, he had so much out that the... See, him and Jimmy Temple were big buddies. I mean, oh, they okay. were friends. And, and Glenn Carr that worked for Temple's, he'd bring Jimmy's big, long truck he had up there, big, long bed. They'd, they'd put those put the bike on it and take it in. Yeah. Wow. 
but we, uh, like I said, we it's, we do that to live. Yeah. Well, how many acres was that total over there? Y'all that had? we had. Mm -hmm. Well, he probably had. Before we were on veterans right there. We probably got six or along the road, and then we probably got twenty something acres up in the on Forge Hideaway, because mm -hmm. we'd have to back up on top of those hills and everything. And then he had 60 acres in behind Dreammore, Miss Hood. She had another farm down there. She had two farms. Really? And she worked and them? No, no, no. She's a school teacher. She yeah. didn't do, she didn't do. Did she hire My anybody? My dad worked the farms. Oh, gotcha. And where, where Miss Hood's house was out there at Dollywood, my dad had a hay field there. He would do, that's where, you know, he cut his hay and stuff, and then that down on that other. We call it the lower place, mm -hmm. but it's it's right where the where Greenmore is. You can see where Ron Ogles cut a road in there. Mm -hmm. That was Rivas right there. You went all the way up through there, in behind Greenmore. That was so y'all just sandwiched uh, Gold Rush Junction, basically. Yeah, kind of on either side. Mm -hmm. I used to ride my pony up on the hill up behind the house. I go up on. I could look down at Gold Rush. Oh wow. Or Rebel Railroad. I remember which Rebel yeah. Railroad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, That's awesome. You could hear the train, I bet, then. Oh, all, yeah. All the time I've heard that there. train for Josh since <laughs> I was a little boy. Yeah. That was the very first thing I think they moved in was the train, Rebel Railroad. And then they started adding some other stuff. But it's amazing how much it's changed. It's like those pictures I showed you, how it's mm -hmm. changed from then till now. and. A lot of people, you know, a lot of women worked over there at that general store at Gold Rush. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, Barbara's mother, Irene, was one of the oldest workers that Dollywood had. Wow. So she was there in the transition then from... Well, she was there probably all, all the way through, I guess. I don't yeah. know, but she was there a long time. Wow. So did you get to go a lot? Gold Back Rush, then you? I did some. I, well, matter of fact, my wife, when all of her, her and her sisters worked over there, and she oh, worked okay. in this one place that had hamburgers and stuff, you know. Mm -hmm. They had a little place over there then that, you know, they, they'd serve food and stuff. Mm -hmm. I'd go over sometimes and eat because I'd get something free then. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to know somebody. <laughs> well, back then you had to because about all I'd have to do have on the day would be about $5. So you could go to you go to Johnson's and get two cheeseburgers and two drinks and fries for about three something, and then the rest of it you put in gas. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you talking to us well, today. That's exactly what we want is to see how it was life was like back in Pigeon Forge back in the day. There's not a Pigeon Forge is not a big city geographically, and it's not a big city population wise either. No. So it just kind of it's nice to have a snapshot of. Uh, of the, that time period. So yes. I appreciate you talking to us today. It's been a good deal. Yep, thank you. you two or three things you okay. can cut my voice out or whatever went okay okay i have this memory of johnson's uh chipped ham sandwiches mm -hmm. did you get the chip no, my ham wife sandwiches? did she liked that it. is what i remember as a kid getting at johnson's and in my mind and i think you're right because you're older and you remember better in my mind it was like where the happy hippie is but it's actually down a little further i guess isn't it where's the happy hippie huh? kind of um, right on the hill what's that been it's been so many different things yeah there's that zippy's car wash and frank allen's 
And then yes, this side. Happy I, I was thinking it was about through there, but you're like I'm saying because I don't remember. Old the Johnson's was right there where the where. Uh, or the AT and T is that what you said? It's up from it because you had the, That's you had the tasty Japanese. freeze down there where the AT and T was. Yeah, I can't remember the tasty. No, freeze. you won't because it's that's been a long time ago. Okay. And then you had the Jersey Queen. It had like a. See, I don't remember that either. I was but, born in. But you need to try to look that up and find us. And then okay. and then next to it was Johnson's, but Johnson's come in quite a few years later. Yeah. But you could circle Johnson's. Uh -huh. Everybody cruise Johnson's. See, tonight. I still think that might be that building because of the way it's built right there. But there where Ron Ogle built that, you know where you go up behind the, to the senior home there? Yeah. You know, the street, that next building there, right there uh -huh. used to be, I mean, they tore it down, but it used to be Cunningham's Restaurant. Okay, that's the one I'm thinking You're of. You're thinking of Cunningham's. So that, okay. and Hurst had that. Okay. Did that and, turn into Granny's later on? Well, I don't know, but it's I, been so many. Things. I can remember well, sometimes for me and George, and if we go to church, we go down there and stop. At Cun and man, you come out there and you'd smell like grease. <laughs> <laughs> and but it. But was it good? Oh yes, yeah, good yeah, food. Yeah, good. I probably wasn't good for you, but it's yeah, good. No, it tasted good. But, but Chip uh, Tam is what I remember being a little girl and Daddy and Mother getting getting me chips. But another Tam. thing too here in Vision Forge, I didn't tell you where the. Where that pepper place is there, we're right talking about Ward Bills, and it used to be Third National Bank. But there used to be what they call the diner. Mm -hmm. Me and Hurst had Was that it years ago. Diner? They just call it, it could have been that? Steel's, yeah, yeah. But, but everybody just called it the diner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You had another one up on the corner, had Seagull's had, you know, right there up from Butler Store. But me and Roger, when we would rock, come home from school, if we played ball or something, We'd stop at the diner, and I mean, back then to get get money was was hard. But we'd save, we'd get up us enough money, and for forty five cents, you could get a big plate of French fries and a fountain drink for forty five cents. Dang. And we thought we were big dudes. Then. <laughs> I mean, and my first haircut was in T. Bo Watson's barber shop behind Butler's store. Oh yeah. My sister took me. He over had a barber shop and a restaurant, didn't he? I don't know. I would, but Tebow had the, the barber shop. So, yeah. I mean, I know he was in the back side. You went into it. And my sister, like I said, she was older driving and everything. She took me over to get my first haircut. But it's, you know, that's, that's really why I try to find all this stuff. You know, like most of these people know way more than I do about this stuff okay. are gone. Yeah. Oh, I know. I know. That's why we're trying there were to... There are two other things that you said that I wanted to uh, thought to ask you about. Um, you talked about your mama canning, making all the good food and stuff. My favorite thing to eat that my grandma made, or one of my favorite things, was she used to can her pork tenderloin mm -hmm. in the jars. Did your mama do that? They have, yes. In my mind... But they I mean, can that, sausage, too. Oh, yeah. The can sausage. They were in the little box. Yep. People don't, people don't, unless they're at least our age, I don't remember that. You remember, you ever heard me talk about cracklings? Mm hmm I've still got two big black pots that my mother and I used. I've got the stirring stick that they stirred it with. My son, wow. I give the pots to my son because my son won't get rid of nothing. He keeps everything you give him. So I got those before somebody got them. And, but I can remember in the backyard of the house, them doing the cracklings and stuff. I can remember grinding sausage on those little grinders. My dad, we'd always, he had a little smokehouse out there off of his tool shed, and we would do, we'd do the hams, and then on the back, back there he had a big shelf that he'd put salt and everything, and he'd salt his middlings down in there. And I could always tell when somebody was gonna come to the house because dad I always go out there and cut some like country ham off to eat. I never did like, you was talking about that chip ham at Johnson's. I didn't like city, what I call city ham. Because I grew up eating country right. ham, mm -hmm. and it just, I just don't like it. Oh, I grew up eating it, but country ham was never was my, but that sausage and tenderloin, best thing ever. <laughs> it had to be right. super tender since it was canned, wasn't it? The tenderloin, like, like flaked like fish. I mean, it was mm -hmm. just, oh, yeah. it's just the best stuff. Okay, that, there's a third thing that you said that I, um, we talked about going to Little Cove Church. See, that's where my, that's where my grandma Husky. That's where they all walked to church because we live over there on Pine Mountain Road. Mm. Um, now, what's her name? 
Edna. Edna Husky. Um, she was in England before she was a Husky, but Leonard Husky, he never stepped foot in a church. But, I remember that name. Yeah. Um, when I was a teenager, uh, we went to Liberty Baptist Church, but yeah. uh, we had I played piano for a little youth choir, a little Methodist yeah. church, and so I took them to all these little Baptist singings around town. They'd never been to these Baptist yeah. I took them up to Little Cove. Is Granny Hatcher one of them little old women that walked around? It's and, Miss Hatcher, yeah. I told her I called her Miss Hatcher. Yeah. Well, I always heard them call her Granny Hatcher, but I scared them little Methodist uh, youth people to death because they'd never seen people go to the altar and all, they thought they were speaking in tongues. Yeah. <laughs> had, they never heard people pray like she's, that. She'd start, she'd have that handkerchief. She'd just go like this to the church. I seen Earl Campbell and the pews were not bolted down. I seen him walk atop of them. Oh my gosh. When I was a kid. And he was preaching so hard. He undid his tie. And I mean, he was just, I mean, he was. I didn't see many people preach that hard. Mm -mm. People that's never been around somebody so it would scare them to death. <laughs> I mean, I've been around when they, the other churches were speaking tongues and stuff, but because I went, we went to Church of God for a few years, and uh, but uh, I mean, I grew up with it. We, they'd have prayer, they'd have altar call. They they'd be up for thirty minutes. I'd be starved to death time we get to the house. <laughs> I mean, it'd be one o'clock, then yeah. we get home. I thought, gosh, cut it short. <laughs> But it, but it was a good bunch of people, and like I said, he is one of the best men I've ever known. Earl Campbell was. Yeah. Well, that was three things that you came across. I was like, oh, if I was asking these questions, I'd follow up on them because I know about. You're so. talking the Husky lady. Well, now where did they live? Right behind City Hall and Pine Mountain Road, Leonard Husky Lane's what it's called now. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. See that's. Okay. I that's built a house right where my grandma's little house was back then. Okay. That's where I so, was. So Don Husky's uh, my dad. Don Husky. There's Don and Johnny and Frank and Burl and Joda who sang with Jim Ball and O.C. and all them. And Brenda. See, and I, Mike Brenda sang with O.C. and picked and played all. See, Jim Ball was my uncle. Oh, yeah. I knew, I knew. When, and Barbara and Jane, we're trying to be yeah. kin, but we're not really. Because yeah. <laughs> they're just like my sisters. I dad, dad. Uh, Lottie, Jim's wife, is my dad's full sister. Oh, okay. There, there are three full ones. That's him and Wayne Myers. Yeah. And Lottie Ball. Okay. So I, you yeah. know, that's that's how those three. They were the th first. My dad is uh, was the oldest. Okay. Yeah. Well, I knew they had to go to church together over there because they walked back over there. And... Well, see, they they're so much older than you are. The, but the Huskies and then the Claybows, where you get over there, Arthur Claybow, and and all that crew that lived there before you get to where you cut into the Little Cove Church. I'm going to take Christina for a drive. I didn't realize you go. So where's the places y'all used to go when you were a child? Up in Cumberland Gap. Yeah. We'd have to go to, to the Overlook and see the stonework that my dad worked on. Oh, as part of the CCC? No, this was, he was just private stonework. Just private? They just had a job going up there. They would leave out 4.30 in the morning. Ooh. You'd have interstates in. They'd mm -hmm. have to go up 25. And they would drive all day up there and lay stone and then drive back that night. Every night? Every night. Wow. Him and two other guys. How long did it take them? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I was just a little boy. I didn't, yeah. I know. But he wanted to go back every year and check on it? Oh, we always went back and checked on it. Well, now, so how? he laid it like in the late 50s? Probably so. Early, mid-50s? He had a... He had a 52 Ford truck that they drove. And they, the ones that went with him was his brother-in-law, Rex Large. That was Amos, Betty's husband, brother. And the other one was Jim Maples, Kim Huffaker's grandfather. Those three rode up there every day. When did they do any other stonework here oh, my in dad, town? Yeah, he worked. My dad worked for, for a few years there. And I, that's how I remember this because I was young, but he worked for what they call, this outfit called Tortino Brown. They did all of the, they, they were Italians. They did all the, those head walls and stuff across the mouth. Oh, wow. My dad cut a lot of those big stone. You hit it like a big 12 pound rock hammer and he cut the face on those stones. And uh, he, his biggest problem was is where he hurt his back in the military. I can remember nights that he'd lay on the floor with his back. Mm -hmm. 
But did he do any stone, any local Pigeon Forge yeah. businesses? No, just McAfee's. I mean, they could have done some more, but I don't know. But, but he I did know, I know they did Because we got where they ordered all that stone. That's probably where the stone come from to put on our house. Oh, our wow. house has got wormy chested in it. Wormy chested, you can't get it. Mm -mm. It's gone. Yeah. But that bought the front part is boxed in and wormy chestnut. Wow. But it, uh, he uh, he was a good stone mason. And so he did, he did he stop doing it just because he physically couldn't anymore. Well, it's just, you know most of most people that does that type of work, if you'll notice, their their backs are gone. Yeah. Yeah. Just up and down, it's too it just hard. wears you out. Yeah. But we that's, that was one of our yearly trips. <laughs> Have you been up there lately? I went up last year. I haven't been up there this year, but I'll probably go sometime here in the next little while. I'll yeah. have to go check it out. Yeah. I do a lot of it across the hem. I like to go up there, too. It's a pretty sure. drive. And, mm hmm uh, Of course, I do a lot of things that they did that I <laughs> try to do for them. Yeah. Yeah. Because like decoration and stuff. I'll try. I don't. My mother went way overboard. We'd have a truckload of flowers to go into the glades and to Little Cove. And some of them I don't get to. And, and I, I try to go put some flowers on some of them just to, because of her and because she met, it meant a lot to her. Yeah. Yep. That's important for sure. What church in the glades? Is it glades? Glades, glades? Lebanon. Lebanon. You know, you know the, where the Jim Gray art thing is? Mm -hmm. That's where they helped my grandfather's funeral, my papa. Mm. In 66, it, it was hot, mm. but they that's where his funeral was held, in that church. Now, I got a lot of, I mean, I have a lot of my mother's families in Gallery. I don't know many of them because we went around my dad's side more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think just because, I mean, he, he was really close to his uncle, Bruce, that... Uh, but we all went to church together. I mean, like Pearl Whaley and all them. Pearl's my dad's first cousin. Kim's grandma Zula, she is, and Glenn McCarter's wife, and Ruby McCarter, they were all first cousins to my dad. Wow. And we all went to church together. That's the usual way it is. You go to church with people and you hang out with them. And yeah. They'd have the Myers reunions over there. When did they have reunions? It was probably in, like in September or something. I can't remember exactly what year, but they'd, they'd always have one every year. And where would that be? It was over at Bruce Myers' house in Little Cove. In Little Cove. He had a big spring up there in the back, and he had a block and everything, a little house. And, and they it was a little shady. They had all trees and stuff in there, and they'd all sit in there. And there's, there's houses in there, too. But That's some more good cooking, wasn't it? They'd all eat meat in there. Yeah, I remember. It's odd to me. He had a gravity line of water come out of that spring going into his house. <laughs> <laughs> An addition here and put a new, another living room on it and a, and redid the kitchen and the bathroom stuff. But there's a big, tall part there. That was the old, original Stott home place. Yeah, that's not still there, though. No, it's all gone. Yeah, it's you said they were going to move it? Where were they going to move it? They moved it back up, but they had to because of the road. Oh, okay. So, so they just they, moved they it back. The road, yeah. Okay. But see, I mean, it's like our place. They, they, they built the road up, and they just about covered my mom and dad's house up. But it's, it's getting old. It's, it's going to have to be something done with it later on. But the is old the chicken stone? house is still there, and the barn's still there. The stone one right next to the barn is that your house? The st little stone house right there next to Diane's resale. Yeah. The resale. Well, I, resale, that's our property too. Yeah. And up there where that garage is at was my sister's. That's her husband had that where they sell the tires. Yeah. He passed away a few years ago, but he mm -hmm. was a mechanic, sold tires and stuff.